people. Welcome to the official start of the 2019 Winter Project Series. This is the first in a long line, I'm hoping, of vlogs of the 2019 build season. Uh, as of today, today's date is November 30th. I'm getting a little bit later start on the prop building than I normally do. <laughs> I've been uh, taking some time off, uh, spending the evenings with my daughter. We've been, she went and got a uh, Nintendo Switch for her uh, birthday. And we've been kind of tag teaming Zelda in the evening. So, uh, we've got, I've got three, pro three projects lined up for this, uh, for the winter season. Uh, the one we're going to be covering today, and we're probably going to have two different projects in this vlog, because the first one's a real quick and simple one. Only a couple hours work. Involve these guys. These are some store-bought props. This one here, the all, uh, Evil Eye spell book, and the Haunted uh, Seance board. It's a basically automated Ouija board. I did a clip in one of the setup vlogs for last year showing those when we got them in. Uh, they never made it out into the haunt. Uh, this little guy, on the other hand, did make it out into the clown area. Problem is, uh, I need to see if I can get him hooked up to a scuba boo board. Which means some wiring and stuff I need to do on him so he'll trigger. Because the sensor on him sucks, as usual. And the other thing is, all three of these run on battery. I want to get away from batteries, so I want to get them hooked up to my power station running underneath 5 volt. Which means I have to break them open and do some rewiring. The other prop I got in here is this guy down here. And that's the scarecrow from our corn hallway. And I think I mentioned in one of our setups we're having some, pro having some problems with him as well, specifically his sensor that goes to the uh, scuba board. I need to open up him and see if I can get it repaired so I can have him trigger when I want him to trigger instead of when he feels like triggering. Because the sensor on him sucks. Uh, so anyway, that, this is going to be our first project. I basically got to break him open, solder on some wiring and t test him and, you know, blue ha ha. And I think I'll give you a little bit of footage on that. So sit back, relax. We're kicking off the 2019 Winter Series, November 30th, right now. Yes, Ram does wear glasses, <laughs> usually for reading, and I'm finding they come in handy for working on small things, too, like wow, really small wires and really tiny screws, beats beating the magnifying glasses on. Uh, been working on the spell book, and I've got it open right now. Now I've attached two wires. First off, here, the back of the ba uh, battery box. Uh, that's your positive connection and your negative connection for the batteries. I went and snipped the uh, negative wires off because they just weren't long enough. And I've got them attached to a pigtail. The black, black part of the uh, pigtail. The red part is the positive. And that's attached to the pigtail. And then I went and used my soldering iron and melted a hole in the back of the battery case because we no longer need it. And ran the wire out there so it can be hooked up to power. Now next is these white wires here. These wires were originally, let me see if I can get this turned around and get you a camera angle here. Was hooked up there where that screw is. That is the sensor on the front of the book. Uh, we don't need the sensor anymore so I just snipped the wires off and I did the same thing, red and black, and I attached the wires. Now at the other end of this wire, I bear the wires and it gets attached to one of my scuba boo boards. You know, and then the board will be triggering this when its sensor goes off on a regular basis. Now we gotta hook this up and give it a trial run, and in order to do that, I'm gonna reassemble it. So okay, I wanted to touch on something here before I go much further. There was a post on Facebook a while back talking about the battery covers and that itty bitty tiny little screw they use to hold them on. Everyone's bitching about them. I bitch about them. I hate the damn things. It's one nice thing about this project. You'll notice battery covers on and the itty bitty little screw is still there. Look at this. I got a cord sticking out of it. That's my power cord. 
so I don't have to ever touch that screw again. <laughs> By the time I'm going to need to take that battery cover off for one reason or another, this prop's probably going to be not working and not in the haunt anymore. But uh, anyway, uh, there's my lead for the sensor that will go to the scuba board when it's in the haunt. And then I did the power line out over here just so I could tell the two wires apart. I mean, they're both red and black speaker wire, 18 gauge. But with it coming out, uh, the power one coming out the battery cover, I'm going to hook this up. I'll know which one goes to power. <laughs> now, it's back together. Let's get me, let me get this stood up and hooked up to power and we'll give it a try make sure my uh the lead for the scuba board works okay we've got the book hooked up to power and this is the line that runs to the scuba board now i've done a little bit of testing on my own but uh i'm i'm noticing something but let's go here we'll they say the eyes touch the wire know to the soul. And what good is a window Okay, now I'm finding there's uh, one thing with this I don't like. As you can see, it just started itself up. Okay, and I know what's causing it to do that. Most of these props have a built-in trigger on them. Uh, I mean, they'll trigger off the sensor, in this case, a scuba boo board. But they also have a built-in sensor on them that will cause them to trip automatically every so often. And I'm thinking, with me having this hooked up to the sensor, uh, not the, uh, with my uh, trip wire that's going to scuba boo board hooked up to the sensor, it's gummed up the timer in here. So the thing's actually firing twice on me. You know, so if I touch it, it fires, and as soon as it gets done, it will fire a second time. And I think that's just a gimmick or a bug with the prop itself. Because I was noticing it did this on uh, battery power, too, before I hooked up my wires. So, I think that's just something with the prop, and it's just something I can live with. I kind of like the all-seeing eye part of it, so, but this is something I can live with. Now it should be tripping here again. Now see, now it's not. Now the timer isn't tripping. But anyway, that's one prop done. Now with the uh, Ouija board over here, I gotta do the same thing. Just basically opening up the back, attaching two wires, and uh, you know I'll probably just connect the sensor and do just like I did with this book. So, and then uh, the clown, which is, you can see the knees sticking up. I'm gonna do the same thing with that. And I think on the Scarecrow, since the Trimie jack is broke, I'm just going to disconnect the uh, built-in sensor on it. And we're all right to that. Quick, simple, easy. Okay, Ouija board is done. And working. Let's see if we can get a shot here. Okay, that leaves the clown and the scarecrow, which I'm going to have to take a break and do later. Uh, as you can see, the clown's working. And his legs do that. There we go. Now that's the third prop. Fourth prop is going to be the Scarecrow, which we're going to get started on next. Okay, just getting started, do, I'm working on the Scarecrow. Ran into a bit of a problem that I'm not going to be able to address right away. Uh, this is the back of the control box for the Scarecrow. And nice thing about this prop, it came with the option of doing battery or doing a wall wart. And it came with a wall wart. If I could just plug it into AC. I've always ran it off of AC. I would love to run it off my power box over there instead. 
problem is is my power box is designed for 3 volt 5 volt and 12 volt DC 3 5 and 12 this is 6 volt DC <laughs> I don't have a 6 on that so for now it's gonna have to stay you know as an AC prop you know plugged into AC but one thing I can do is the uh, when I bought this I bought it on clearance it was damaged and it was the uh, foot pad jack was broken so I had originally taken out the wires you know cut the jack off of the foot pad and just had them wired in with my 18 gauge wire over there and I ran it down and it worked the first season I noticed during packing or whatever I think one of the lines broke in there because the foot pad option is no longer working now on the hat it does have that little black dot there is the uh, motion sensor for it thing works about half the time I don't like that sensor and this is the cord that goes up to that sensor I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip the uh, connection off and just hardwire right into that and then I can tie that into my scuba board and that should trigger the prop <sighs> keywords is should but we're going to mess around with that I'm going to do that and give it a try and see how she runs okay this seems to work uh, I cut the sensor off the hat or cut the wires attached a wire to it and I touch the lead he triggers Now one thing I am noticing, he does have a sound sensor in him as well. You know, if there's a loud enough noise, he'll trigger and go off. It does, like most of the sound sensors in these props, it doesn't work half the time. But with the uh, jury rig I just did on the motion detector, he'll fire with a scuba boo board now. Now I do have, since I've got him out, i got a repair and I noticed. He's got some uh, raffia here to go up around his neck the glues let loose I'm gonna go get my hot glue gun get that repaired and then this guy will be officially done and we can go from there okay now that projects done that was the first project took about three three and a half hours roughly a lot of it was uh, opening them up and you know chasing wires around figuring out what was what for me always oh, takes me a little time I like to be careful with it we're ready for our second project and this is one I've kind of done before, and it's also I'm adding a new twist to it this year. Many of you know, as many of you know, I use scuba boo boards in my uh, haunt to uh, either control lighting or control various props, whether it's handmade or spirit props or what have you. There are four channel boards. In other words, you can hook up four different things to them, and you can get them with or without stereo sound on them. Uh, they have an mp3 player. Uh, I recently, or actually back August, September, I bought three more boards and never got my project done with them. My project was to mount them in a container, a watertight container. Uh, so they go out in the haunt and the water wouldn't get to them. Uh, to trigger them, they use an IR sensor which comes in handy, uh, which is nice. You know, that's how I've ran all my boards for years. I ran into some problems. I'm tethered to the board, for one. This has to be plugged into the board. So you only put the sensor out so far, you know, so, so it kind of limits you. Uh, so what I want to do, and uh, another friend of mine, uh, Bobby Atkins, I give you a shout out, Bobby, you deserve one every so often. Uh, did one where he took a scuba boo board, 
got rid of the IR sensor and worked out uh, how to use these wireless uh, security alert things. Basically, the uh, board that's inside this white box here ends up going in with a scuba boo board. You plug it in, and then you can put this anywhere up to 30 feet away from the scuba boo board. No wires or anything. It's all wireless. And that will trigger the board. I like that idea. I uh, don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> Okay, people, as you can see from my background, we're not downstairs working on the boards. It's actually been about a week or so since I shot the last segment. I've had some other things come up I've had to attend to. And I am switching gears. I am having to shelve the work on the boards. I ran into a problem with the uh, little security sensors. That was the first step in that project, getting them set up and ready to be put into the containers with the boards. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Bobby Atkins. A big thank you for him. Uh, he spent some time, I had some questions when I initially started the project. Uh, and he spent a lot of time with me in video chat where he was answering questions and giving me some tips and pointers, which I really appreciate. And then today in texting, and come to find out, when we were looking at the boards, uh, when he shot his original video on using those little sensor, home security sensors from the Harbor Freight, uh, they've upgraded the sensors and changed the boards some. So he's going to need to go down and get one and mess around with it and do an advised video because we weren't able to figure out the problem. You know, I mean, he had me over doing things to the board that weren't working. Uh, I were doing things that definitely were, weren't, weren't working. So I, we decided our best bet is to wait for him, you know, when he gets the time. And he's a busy man, very, very busy man. Uh, you know, next time he goes down to Harbor, Harbor Freight, he's going to buy one and mess around with it. Once he gets a walk through or a work, workout or work around done on the boards, you know, we'll revisit that project. But for right now, we're getting on to our major project for the season. And I know, it's still, it's December 10th now. And we're doing the major project of the season. As you can see, we've got the table saw set up. It's ready to go. Now what is Ram going to be cutting? I'll show you that here in a second. It's right outside the door. But, Kaylee alert, we got a Kaylee in the doorway. She's waiting to go for her walk. It's about that time to do her job. She helps us turn on the Christmas lights every day and then we go for a walk. But, it's not quite time. You still got about a half hour yet. That means I've got 30 minutes to play in the shop before the Christmas lights come on. But you see that nice big stack over there? Foam. One inch foam. Four feet wide by eight foot long. Can we guess what we're doing? <laughs> more wall panel skins with a twist here's where the major project part comes in we are going to be going through and rehashing I've got four stacks of skins that we use in our haunt a lot of them uh, are scratched they're dinged what have you they need repainting and some need maintenance. There's some in there that need replacing, you know, because they've been broke or chipped or just to the point where I can't use them anymore. Hence, that huge pile over there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start out, we got to get those all cut down to size. That's going to be our first step in the project. And then once we get all those cut down into size, we're going to be coming over here and I'm going to be dragging out one pattern at a time. Like our first pattern we're going to be working on is this one here, the blue. And these are the uh, skins out of our photo hallway. We're gonna get those into the shop. I'm gonna weed out the damaged ones. And we'll be doing something with them. Uh, we're gonna be maintenancing the good ones. And then I'm gonna be carving up some new ones of that pattern. I need 40 of each type of pattern. And I don't have 40 of each type of pattern anymore. So, we'll be going through this pile 
you know, and like say I need five skins for that. I'll come in here, I'll drag out five skins, cover five new ones, and then all the skins, every single one of them is getting repainted. And we're going to change it up. We're changing colors on the patterns on each of the skins too. Uh, in fact, for the uh, photo hallway, we're doing a brown wing. It's uh, right now. It's uh, brown wings coating on the bottom with an orange wallpaper uh, up top with a yellow design on it. We're going to change it uh, the orange to blue, and we'll have a different shade of brown down below. And then we're going to leave the yellow as an accent. And I've got the paint for it and stuff too. So, you know, that's going to take a while. You know, we got to carve some new panels. We got to maintenance the old panels and we got to paint them. I've got six different styles of panels out there, folks. <laughs> six different styles of skins. Every one of them is going to be getting hit this year. And then, once all those are hit, I'm going to see what I have left. I still have one pattern to create yet. And it's for the pirate area. And we've got an idea on that one. And then I'll get into that. Probably June, July <laughs> when I get to it. I have a feeling this is probably going to take me about four months to do. Definitely not going to cover it all in this vlog. Uh, so you'll get some little snippets here and there. And then I'll post it. And then in another month you'll get another one and so on and so on and so on. And if we get back to doing the scuba boo boards and the sensors, I'll do a clip on that in the middle of it somewhere along the line. I hope. But anyway, right now... Uh, once, right, oh, I should put a caveat to back on this project. I have until 4.15 every day where I can work out here with the table saw. Because the table saw plugs into that outlet. And that black cord is going down to my table saw. This cord here goes outdoors to the Christmas display out front. The Christmas display comes on about 4.30. And if I'm running the saw, I'm going to be blowing the breaker. So I can't have that. So when the Christmas display is on, I can't run the table saw. And there's no way I'm going to... I've got 60 sheets of foam out there. They all need to be cut down to size. No way I'm going to get it done today. But we're going to get started on today. And working out here on the shop with the table saw. And I've got a mess. I also have all the blanks cut. Now, as far as waste on the blanks... I have 60 pieces of this. They're one foot one inch. These I'm going to save to finish off a project later this summer and that's the uh, ceiling up there. I've been slowly re-insulating the shop with phone scrap. I do three thicknesses of it. I got from this beam back to do and I'll probably just do the next three bays. I'm not going to try to crawl up on top of the storage locker. But I got these three bays here, those three bays there and what I got out there should do that job but that's a project for later in the season right now we're working on something else now I got all the blanks piled there if you notice I got some skins in here these are the skins from my photo hall and they've been they're dinged up they're marked up the brown's been touched up you know we got two different shades of brown and it's starting to get really really obvious so we're going to go through and repaint all of them. In the process, I need to kind of sort through them. There's some in there that are damaged, what have you, too damaged for me to use. So we're going to pull them out. And that's where those are coming in at. I'll make up some new ones to get up to my total. And when I originally made these, some of them, depending on the year I made them, you know, it was like 30, 35. I need 40 of each panel. Okay, I'm getting to that point where I need to make sure I have 40 of each panel or di different type of panels So we'll get a count on them damage and we'll make up enough. So there's 40 of those panels Now the damaged ones I've got in there. We're gonna do something else with Still for the haunt and I'll cover that when I get to it. Okay, that didn't take long I uh, went through the panels and we ended up with 31 panels that just need to be repainted maintenance a bit. I also ended up with five damage, so those are going to be replaced. And I'm going to have a use for those too, and I'll cover that in a bit. And then I had four specialty patterns. 
Uh, what makes these special is some of them have been notched. Uh, for several areas in the haunt, the panels have to be notched to fit in. And what have you. And then, like these two here, are about a foot short. And they're a foot short because at one point in time we had the photo hallway over in the rose bed and one of the walls ran right through one of the roses. Couldn't get the skid in, so I had to cut a foot of it off so I could you know, get it into place. That way I didn't kill the rose. I'm going to keep those. So, uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'll make up nine new panels here. That'll bring this stack up to 40. And I'll end up actually having 44 because of the four special ones. And I can use those in the hunt as a filler someplace if need be. These damaged ones, depending on where the damage is on them, I can whack them down, turn them into one foot panels. Because I know some of these one foots up here have been shaved down and cut or damaged and whatever. They're not true one foot panels anymore. So some of these are going to go garbage. And even the ones I'm going to be getting rid of, you know, not using as one foot panels anymore, I've got to use for tune on. Okay, now that all the cutting's done and we've sorted the panels and what have you, it's time to get to work on them to uh, get them toward their end state. Uh, I wanted to show you something I'm doing a little bit different. Uh, I'm adding these here to it. Now, when I hang these panels and we get to like the end of the wall, you see a foam, a two by two, and then another piece of foam on the end. And it's kind of ugly. We've always wanted to kind of dress it up. You know, while I paint the end of the uh, wall panels to match, the wood, uh, the partition walls that these mount to are not painted. And you can see them. So what I was thinking about doing is I took some of the scraps that still had big enough chunks to it. And I figured, you know, it's just big enough. I measured. I could go like that. That way you don't see the wood or the end of the uh, panels. Figured I'd give it a try. Uh, drawback is, is with this foam, the smaller the piece, as far as narrower of the piece, the easier it breaks. So I don't know how long these are going to last. But, you know, it's something I'm going give to a, give a try to. It'll work at least for this season. How long they last. I may get a couple seasons out of them. I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. Now, our first project, and here, let me get this one up on the table, is actually on the ones I'm keeping, and these are all the ones I'm keeping, and they're ready for paint, but before I can paint them, I've got a repair i got to do. On this pattern here, this was the very first pattern I ever carved. When I mounted them to a wall, I used a metal washer and a screw. And when you tighten down the screw, the metal washer digs in and leaves a little circle. The ones I use now is I use a plastic washer on the screw to hold it, and the plastic washer doesn't dig, dig into the foam. Nearly as bad as these. These are really bad. So, before I can paint them, because those are, well, even after they've been repainted, those are going to show up like crazy. I need to fix them. So what I'm going to do, and I use this for repair all the time on my foam panels, it's white caulking. And I'm going to go through each panel, anything that has a hole in it or where uh, a uh, washer had been. And I'm simply going to squeeze in some caulking, fill it with caulking, smooth it out, let it dry, and then these will be ready for painting. Fun part is, I got all of those to do. So this is probably going to take me the better part of the day to do. <laughs> but it's repair work. Well, another stage done on this project. Ooh, smoky. It's not that hot in here, but it's smoky. But uh, another step done. All the caulking on all the pre-existing panels for this style is done. I just got done doing the one foot. Uh, getting ready to move on into the next stage on these. There's still quite a few stages to go. I got more work to do on these still before they're ready for paint. And I've still got the ones that need to be carved. And we'll get on to that probably next vlog. Or next clip. Depends on the footage, I guess. Uh, and since I basically have two projects on, on this vlog.
Or actually, it was supposed to be three. Uh, and I've got prior footage. I don't know how much footage I got on the camera. I got to dump the footage on the camera to find out. I may just, what you've seen so far, put up as a log and we'll get, finish this project and get on to other panels in another vlog. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. But I'm going to call it quits for right now and say, stay spooky, stay toxic. <laughs>